What is going on YouTube? It's your boy Matt Gifted Hands back to you with another haircut tutorial and I'm about to put my boy back in the game. This is my second time cutting his hair and I feel like it was the right time to go ahead and create a dope haircut tutorial and show you how I do a low to medium drop fade. What you want to do when you, when you do a drop fade is your initial guideline, your first guideline that you make has to contour the client's shape of his head so you want to kind of drop it towards the back and then what i like to do is i don't like so much of a compressed blend i like to create at least a half an inch to an inch per guideline as i'm showing right here so i started with the lever all the way open and now i put it in the middle and close it to remove that first guideline so use a use a trimmer put in your guideline then you have a lever all the way open go up about half of an inch with no guard which is equivalent to a half and then to remove that shadow line put it in the middle start to start to you know cut at it and then put it all the way closed the lever all the way closed and remove that line all the way <clears throat> now same exact steps half of inch to an inch per guideline grab your number one guard i have my lever all the way open creating my next guideline my client has some tight tight curls so you want to either use a comb or a brush to make sure that you get those curls combed out that way you can feed the hair a lot easier into a guard so right here same exact steps guys i started with the lever all the way open i have it in the middle and then i close it and that's what's going to soften up this this uh next panel but to remove it completely we'll go back and use a half guard but what i like to do after the one guard i'll jump to my two guard um if you've been watching my channel for you know for a long time i like to explain the reason why i jumped to a two guard instead of a one and a half guard i feel like there's no contrast from a one guard to a one and a half guard however when you start with the number two that kind of just blends right into the bulk whatever he has up top and we can turn that guard around and go with the grain also but once you jump back down to a one and a half guard and remove that that darkness that the two left behind there's a contrast there's gradiency and there is a better transition in my opinion instead of going from a one to a one and a half to a two I go from a one guard to a two guard back down to a one and a half guard. So you see that that two removed all that bulk, softened up that area again. It's gonna be like a low to medium drop fade. I started my initial guideline pretty low and now this is my one and a half guard. And that's pretty much gonna bring that whole dark area down and just blend right into the one open, right? So typically after I do the one and a half guard and I start with the lever all the way open, work my way down to the close position, as I do for every guideline, if you get your one guard and start with the lever open and start using the corners of your blade to remove any dark spots or dark areas, that's gonna blend right into that one and a half. You're basically just cross-tracking your work. That bottom line that you see, you're gonna remove that as shown right here with the lever all the way open using your 1 16th guard or half guard depending on what system you're using um these are my babyliss clippers so i'm using the wall premium guards um they normally you know they fit perfect on this clipper so i like using the wall premium guards these are my uh pro li's the babyliss pro li i love these clippers <clears throat> lever all the way open with no guard I took the half guard off and that's gonna bring everything together again I, I, I like to expand my my blend I like to create gradiency light medium to dark I don't want to compress blend and the haircut that my client showed me on picture um, was this it was he said I like a drop fade but it was like a low to mid you know blend so that's what we went with the contrast leading into a dark beard, you line that up with the dark lineup, keeping that front vertical bar, you know, pretty dark enough to where you could bring a crispy lineup out. Man, it just, it takes it to a whole nother level. And guys, this back area sometimes can be a little more dense, a little darker. So you may find yourself using no guard or lower guard just to make sure that everything is proportionate and blends to the back as well. 
This is what I like to call a 50 50 fade. I create my blend on one side, I work my way to the back, and then I cut the left side, um, basically using the same exact step. So, and you can see that whenever you go on the other side, you bring the other side to the back, and you can just see that everything is just put together, everything's proportionate, everything's blended. I had started this this technique in barber college and it just stuck with me. So what you do to one side, you do to the other. This, this side is pretty much cut for the most part. I do do some detail work, but I really wanted to take my time and show you guys uh, a slow down version of whenever I do the razor, the lineup, I'm blending in the beard and just show you guys. Like I know this can be difficult for a lot of barbers, up and coming barbers, student barbers that watch my channel. So other than fading and bringing a nice blend together, I feel like a lineup does that much more to a good haircut. It makes it a great haircut, an amazing haircut. Um, so keeping keeping this natural lineup pretty dark, but I wanna, it's gonna be cosmetic guys because in the corners I have to remove some hair. However, you can tell in the beginning of the video, um, again, this is my second time cutting his hair. When he came in, that was a grown out haircut. I did know, I, you know, I didn't do a pushback. It's simply just a cosmetic lineup, removing the corners to have a nice 90 angle lineup, a nice crispy lineup. And I'm actually gonna have the honors of cutting his hair for his wedding coming up here soon. Basically, I was a trial run. He tried out a couple barbers out here in the Tampa area, reached out to me, booked with me, and he decided to pick me for uh, for his haircut for the wedding, man. So I, that's dope. I appreciate that. But basically, we're just making sure we tap at that line, tap at that hairline, and just make sure we don't, you know, push it back too far. I don't think it's a pushback. Again, it's a cosmetic lineup. Um, there is there is hair being removed on a hairline. Some clients you have to remove a lot more uh, hair than others. So with my lineup, you have to make that thing. <laughs> you have to cut off a lot of hair in order for me to have have a crispy lineup. A lot of barbers, elite barbers at that, are scared to do my lineup. So I mean, if you got to make it cosmetic and, and the client wants that and asks for that, then do it. But it's definitely not a pushback. <clears throat> and you see how I left the vertical bar and the C cup area a little dark on the blend. Right here, I, I like to uh, turn the light off sometimes when I'm lining up the client. Just because it creates a shadow, there is a light directly right above me. And sometimes it creates a shadow. So once I turn off the main light and leave my ring light on, I'm able to see the hair a little better, especially if there's any hair hanging over. I'm able to use that to my advantage and create a nice, a uh, crispy lineup. So I'm doing that with the beard, then I work my way down to the mustache. We're gonna pretty much uh, keep the length on the beard, however, we're gonna pick everything out and shape it up and bring that beard back to life. A nice shape to it. We're, we're just kind of cleaning up the inside of the goatee area. Wanna, he wants to keep it pretty natural, but you know, clean it up a little bit. And then right here, I like to do the, the mustache at the top of the lineup like this and then turn around my clipper and go in a downward position. Now, this is where, again, after the lineup, you know, the fade is done, you do the lineup, then you add the razor and some color enhancements, and that's what just takes the haircut to a whole nother level. And it's just dope to see your haircut come to life. You don't know where you're gonna begin or where to start whenever a client walks in, but once a haircut is done, the result is shown, it's just a relief. The client's happy. Um, it's a dope haircut tutorial, dope learning experience. So right here, guys, what I went ahead and did was I already went with the grain. Now I'm going against the grain, across the grain, making sure I have a nice, nice clean cut, nice sharp look. I'm removing any uh, hair against the grain that needs to be removed. I'm going away from the lineup, towards the lineup, in different angles just to remove those tiny little hairs. And this will make the hair the hairline last a lot longer um, going against and cross the grain. But you definitely want to apply some shave gel. I do dry shave uh, every now and then. Um, however, it's very comfortable for the client 
and to apply some shave gel it replenishes the skin it rehydrates the skin it allows the nice glide smooth with the razor it's not pulling there's not going to be uh, any irritation um, and you know just make sure that you can tell that I'm doing small little strokes and I'm following that line I'm basically just favoring the tip of that razor blade I'm not using a full blade but I'm making sure I pay attention to detail and now with the cheek line I'm doing against the grain and you can tell that hair is just coming off that blade is sliding smoothly against that shave shave gel and this is gonna create a better shave and a comfortable service for your client because when you book a service with me when you book a haircut appointment with me you're not booking an appointment you're booking an experience you're booking great customer service it's not just a haircut guys you're booking the whole convenience of booking your time slot and, and sitting down and getting your haircut at that time slot there's so much more than just getting a haircut guys so charge your worth know your worth educate yourself add more services to your to your you know to your schedules to your booking app talk to your client get to know them more and then they may just ask you to cut their hair for the wedding or a special event an anniversary uh job opportunity um a job uh, uh pr promotion you know i get it all the time man clients come to me because they want to look good feel good for a special event or just weekly you know every two weeks it don't matter but i feel like a haircut just does so much than just getting a haircut from a barber the service um you know the one-on-one -on -one, especially if you're in a suite it's a little more intimate setting and i just feel like it's a dope all-around experience whenever you book a haircut appointment with me and look i'm just free handing this beard this is what brings the haircut to life guys if you like this video make sure you give it a thumbs up it helps the channel grow this is the finished product i hope you enjoyed it hope you learned something from it and as always team gifted stay gifted i love y'all guys peace